I don't advocate for a lot of people to day trade. I'm sure there can be successful day traders, but they're competing in a in a game that's very difficult to win. Yes. So their time period is these high frequency trading systems can be in and out in nanoseconds, but you're trying to day trade, but they're front running your trades and doing all these things that make it so difficult for you to try and make money. And a day trading system is I'm out before the end of today. So yes. you might be in something for 15 minutes, an oh. hour, two hours. And so when people talk about trading, a lot of the general public thinks of day trading. They yes. think, oh, you're talking about day trading. No, no, no. Trading has a lot of different time periods and day trading is the by far the most difficult. Welcome to the Cashflow Academy podcast. I'm here with my great friends, uh, Corey Halliday and Noah Davidson. How are we doing today, guys? Excited to be here. I am alive. Really excited yeah. to see Noah Davidson, I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah. Noah Davidson is the toughest guy. Like, like well, you know how they have that pain scale from 1 to 10? You go to the hospital and they say, what's your pain scale? And you say, uh, oh, you know, like 6 or whatever. You know? Noah's a perpetually 1 or 2. That's the worst <laughs> yeah. thing he gets. And his 9, it would be like I would die. His yeah. two is my eight. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like my dad used to say, look, kid, if you're going to be stupid, you got to be tough. <laughs> <laughs> so Noah just got out of the hospital. We don't want to give too much information, but he's a tough dude. Lots of pain. Now he's like, he gets, got out of the hospital. Did you go home last night? I got home yesterday. So he goes, dude, I'm bored. Yeah. I'm literally, I like literally, we're doing no work until you feel 100%. He's like, I'm bored. Uh, can we, All right. can we? So you're just filled with happiness oh i'm you know what <clears throat> it's a meditative process to lay in a hospital bed for a few days <laughs> you got a lot of time to think <laughs> they're, they're not comfortable they are not. andy and i had the discussion of do we really let him come and do that well he's adamant he wants to he wants to do it he's bored so you know, here we are i'll tell you so just to introduce if you're new to the podcast <laughs> let's uh do a brief uh, very brief introduction. Noah, to give a little bit about your background. Hi, I'm Noah Davidson. I'm here because I'm devastatingly handsome and I'm occasionally comedic relief. I know a few <laughs> things about trading and investing because I've been at it for a long time. That's pretty good. That was yeah. succinct, wasn't it? <laughs> Corey, a little bit about you. Yeah, I've been in the markets about equal amount of time, knowing these guys for a couple of decades. Love everything to do with the markets, trading, investing. My background is is in the market series four option principle and did some things that way and now teaching love it. it it's amazing that i get to sit at this table with you guys because we've known each other for years and years and every time without exception one of you guys says something or both of you say something i had no idea and like how do you know that yeah. like, where do you even go to <laughs> learn that so uh great to today's topic is one that i'm i'm very excited to talk about as a student uh, I think in my life, I'm always tweaking this as well. You know, the foundation, we're, we're going to talk about the difference between trading stocks and investing in businesses and shares of businesses. And in my opinion, those are, the more I read Benjamin Graham, <clears throat> you know, I reread that intelligent investor every year. The more I, I listen to Warren Buffett, and yet the more I see guys that have quant systems and computerized trading, you have these two paths. And it's a lot like, you know, basketball, I guess. You can run zone, you can run man, you can run a press. It just depends on who you have on your team and the style you enjoy and the style guys like. Because I've seen guys win, you know, Kentucky with Rick Pitino used to press everyone and kill. And yeah. Jim Beheim has that zone that seems impenetrable. And of course my coach, I'm partial that man to man and, and all of them have won. And, and proven to be successful. So I don't think it's a matter of, our discussion I don't think is which one's best. I think the discussion is how are they different and uh, how are they different and how do uh, you decide which ones you wanna do? What what do others bring to the table? You, so, gotta, you gotta work with your personnel and your system, right? And so yeah. this is like, when you think about like trading and investing, you gotta look at your personnel, yeah. you know, who's on your team, mm -hmm. and then you have to have a system. And then, you know, you, there's room in there to adapt and customize and tweak and game plan. But there's, there's always those two elements. What are the, so what would you say the biggest, I mean, define it for, Corey, if I went to you and I said, what's the difference? Yeah, a, a trade is something that we plan to be out of. Good, bad, 
It, we're going to be out of it in a relatively short period of time. And investment, when you're invested in something, it's you're in this for the long haul. And so it's the difference between dating and getting married, right? You're going on dates. You're, you're not planning for the future. You're just getting to know this person or whatever, you know, some, some are good. Some, you have to hit that stop loss and get out. Yeah, of yeah. But, but it's just dating. And that's what trading is. Whereas investing is okay. We're going to build a life together. I'm, I'm now married to this position. And that's how I look at investing. When Warren Buffett buys something, he says, I want to own it forever. I want this to be something that I never sell. And exiting, deciding when to exit is actually the most difficult part of getting something right. That timing of the exit is the difficult part in trading. It's more important than your entrance. That's for sure. Oh yeah. 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 I would say it's kind of like the marshmallow test for kids, yeah. you know, and that's the delayed gratification ability. Like you can have one marshmallow now and that's tasty. And as a kid, I was, I was easily seduced by that. It's like, what's yeah. that? I can have a whole marshmallow. But if you wait until the end of class, kids, you can have a whole Ooh. package or whatever bag. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm sorry, what did you say? Yeah. Um, it's instant gratification versus a delayed gratification. And they both have their place. I mean, sometimes you just got to grab a quick buck and, and make some money. Um, but investing in the long term is how you create that generational wealth and passive income over time. There's no question in my mind. I mean, <clears throat> if you read Benjamin Graham, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't outright condemn trading and speculation. He doesn't outright condemn it. He does say keep those activities very uh, segregated, right? He says we're going to have a – I mean, he wouldn't even have the money in the same account if That's, it were him. Yep. Yeah. So we have speculation. What I think mm -hmm. changes the, the idea of speculation, and I think AI brings a whole new different uh, – there's no question that we can measure – buying and selling pressure. Absolutely no question. I think that you would probably know this more than I would, Noah, but right now in the markets, I would imagine 90 plus percent of the trading that goes on is computerized. Oh yeah. I mean, it's all high frequency trading algorithms. You've got AI yeah. operating systems, you've got quants, you've got, you know, seasoned traders. And the thing you got to remember is as, as a trader, the skill level is, is much higher because you're competing against the, the cream of the crop. Um, and the great leveler is time. And yeah. so time is, you know, investing is a much lower um, skill level. It's a temperament thing that you just have to have patience. You have to make sure you've got good fundamentals. And then over time, um, you know, the price action and, and trying to compete against the, the market day in and day out goes away. And yeah. so that, you know, if you're, if you're going to be in the trading game, um, that means you need to have a system to be able to compete. Yeah. And, and here's the way I think about that. So investing, everyone within the sound of my voice can be a successful investor. I really believe that. But the shorter the time period that you're going to get into trading, the more educated you have to be. So if you're an investor, everyone can be successful at that with some education. Then if you want to take the next step and you want to be a trader, but not super active, not day trading or anything like that, you need a certain level of education. You need to get that to where you understand entry, exit, stop. You need to understand some things. And the shorter the time period, the more you're competing against computerized system. And you mentioned high frequency trading. This is why I don't advocate for a lot of people to day trade. I'm sure there can be successful day traders, but they're competing in a in a game that's very difficult to win. Yes. So their time period is these high frequency trading systems can be in and out in nanoseconds, but you're trying to day trade, but they're front running your trades and doing all these things that make it so difficult for you to try and make money. And a day trading system is I'm out before the end of today. So yes. you might be in something for 15 minutes, an oh. hour, two hours. And so when people talk about trading, a lot of the general public thinks of day trading. They yes. think, oh, you're talking about day trading. No, no, no. Trading has a lot of different time periods and day trading is the by far the most difficult. But if you want to swing trade or position trade, your odds of success greatly increase. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and day trading is a job. Like you got to be present to win. You got to be in front of computers. You see these guys with all their monitors. Now, more monitors don't make you a better trader. Yeah, they don't. <laughs> like if you can't trade well on Looks one monitor, cool, you can't trade. You don't. Well, you don't trade any better with two. 
Yeah. And so, you know, I've seen a lot of people go down that path and I've, I've coached and mentored thousands of people over the year. And I, I could honestly say I could count on one hand, the number that were truly born to be day traders. It's um, kind of yeah. like the monitor thing is kind of like, uh, my wife and I have two problems. I would never, I have to be careful because she might hear this, but my wife has a purse problem. She really does. Yeah. She has a purse problem. And the reality of it is, is you really, uh, you probably only use one purse at a time. I have a gun problem. Yeah. <laughs> I have a, I have a John Wick room. And people say, Andy, why do you need a John Wick room? And I say, I don't. Well, why do you have one? Because it looks really cool. Yeah. That's why. I'm never going to, like yeah. these guys, oh, I'm, I need it to fight the government. Hey, come on, they got drones, right? Yeah. Or Second Amendment. And no one's so going to. you're saying we need drones? Yeah, no one's going to break. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No one's going to break into my house. But I don't need as many firearms as I have. You know, I have two hands. That's about it. So I think dual monitors. Yeah. You know. Well, and it's a, it's a hobby. Two purses, one for each hand. Yeah. Two firearms, one for each hand. Yeah. Two monitors, um, one for each eye. I, I would say there's a personality trait in there that is uh, there's a bit of an adrenaline junkie aspect to try to be careful with that. Oh, well, absolutely. And so I've met people over the years who the, some of the more successful traders I've met, they're also the kind of guys who go play poker and go play cards for a living. Like they're card sharks and they're, yeah. they're, 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 they're oh, quants in that, in that regard. The guys that write some of the best books on trading actually come from that Co world. Absolutely. Because yeah, yeah. it's about, there is an element to both in managing emotions. Um, if you look at the book, uh, Benjamin Graham, The Intelligent Investor. It's a book on temperament. It really isn't yeah. about, there's a little bit of, you know, I mean, basically, their form, the Buffett formula is earnings and growth and some combination of, you know, value with earnings and growth. And they value it there. It's really temperament. I think Br Buffett's brilliance, which is unquestioned, uh, I think that often overshadows, though, his temperament. You know, B Buffett doesn't like the high frequency trading. I don't think he likes the quant stuff. It's kind of funny. There's a clip of him and Munger's always next to him. I laugh at Munger because Munger doesn't care about anything. Yeah. He's got a zillion dollars and <laughs> he's sitting there. Buff Warren Buffett's trying to speak. Yeah. Right? He's trying to speak. And they got their C's candies up there, you know, and like you know, Munger's <laughs> munching on this lollipop or whatever he's got. Some C's candy. And Buffett's making this great point and Munger's like, but Buffett says he doesn't like the casino. He doesn't like the in and out, in and out. And the yeah. reason is, is from their standpoint, from a philosophical standpoint, I, I tend to agree a little bit with this, is it's really a different game to just, but I have a quote on my wall. I lean more towards the investing side. And the quote says, you know, if, if all you do is become rich by buying and selling little pieces of paper, you know, it's a failed life. Life is more than wealth accumulation. They really like the idea of a business that serves people with high quality work and you get a profit from that work. You're not gaining money, you're earning. That's why they call it earnings. But on the up and down side, you're gaining money. That's why they call it capital gains or capital losses. Yeah. So it, it is an interesting way to go about it because a person who makes their money as a poker player is making their money as a poker player, right? They, they're not going to change the world. Yeah, you know, yep. Microsoft changed the world. You know, Google changed the world. Uh, in my opinion, you know, Ben and Jerry have changed the world. Yeah. You know, with a business. <laughs> oh, absolutely. So, but that's not to cry. There's nothing inherently wrong or morally wrong with making a dollar by buying something low and selling something high, because what you're really doing there is giving people what they want. Yeah, you're buying what you want and you're giving them what they want. And it's trade and it's commerce. Yeah. And usually what they're critiquing is more of the day trading and more of the, like I talked about, the high frequency trading systems are built to try to front run different orders and basically get filled right in front of things and just t take these little profits out of the market. And they're not providing any service. They're not doing anything yeah. other than kind of stealing some capital yeah. out of the broader markets. They're providing liquidity. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that's exactly. What, that's the argument is, oh, they're providing liquidity. Really, they're not because they're in and out so quick. I yeah. mean, it's, yeah. but 
but it's funny because Warren Buffett will talk about it and then Munger will chime in and he'll say something, yeah. you know, and Buffett <laughs> will be like, well, I wouldn't have put it like that, yeah. but I do agree. Yeah. You know, he'll, yeah, he'll like, kind of try and soften it a little yeah. bit, but Munger doesn't care. Yeah, like when, he said, yeah. when he said Bitcoin's a turd and yeah. Buffett's just like, you didn't just use yeah. that word. Like I can say that because our listenership is, yeah. you know, if, like if we, if we have a hundred thousand people listen to this, that's okay. You get millions of people. You can't talk that way, right? right? Well, you, maybe you can. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> just depends have, on how much money you're you have. If you're Do you have a few money? Yeah. Then you can say whatever you want. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, I suppose so. Yeah. Um, I have politely disagree money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> politely. Yeah. Some of us are kiss butt money, right? Yeah. So what's funny is um, when you talk, well, I don't know if it's funny. What, what's a problem is when a person wants to get into this business, that's a real important decision. And I, and I want to go back to what Noah had to say is you want to play to your strengths. I, I remember I didn't become a teacher because I was a born investor. Actually, my personality, I've, I have to work so hard, had to and still have to on temperament. Yeah, I'm, I'm a passionate guy. I'm a filled with emotion. And I remember Kim Kiyosaki years ago. She is like one of my heroes. We were in Las Vegas, and we had not – known each other well. Uh, I had come in. I don't think I was an official advisor at that point, but I was kind of a guest speaker. And she pulled me aside and she said, I've taught, that's like one of the, I get emotional. It's one of the best compliments I've ever had. She says, you know, I've traveled all the world. I've been in this teaching business forever. She goes, you simplify things as good as, you know, as well as anyone I've ever seen. You should embrace this and be a teacher. So I became a teacher not because I was beating Warren Buffett, in an investing contest, I became a teacher because I thought, well, if you only have one talent, <laughs> <laughs> screwing in light bulbs, and someone finds another, you go with it. Yeah. And it was a great decision. But when people come and decide, you know, what, what do I want to do? I think you got to find your strength, yep. right? What is your talent? What is your stupid human trick? And for me, I love business. I'm fairly good. I don't like negotiating, but I'm okay at it very comfortable with sales, um, you know, a extrovert personality, not the guy that wants to sit and day trade. And so my personality was more of a teacher and I love the investing. I love, like I love dividends. Um, I get a dopamine hit on that dividend because I think it's the easiest money in the world. Like even the, my property managers in real estate bug me. The dividend people never bug me. Right? Yeah. They are so, I mean, it's just, that money comes as clean and as slick, and as you compound, you know, it's cool. So when a person says, I want to do something more, I'm behind in my 401k, I'm not going to make it, I, I'm not built to go out and do real estate. People go to the real estate seminar, and I love real estate. I would never decry real estate. What I decry is that when people go there, they have these visions of grandeur, grandeur, Grandeur or grandeur? Grandeur. Depends grandeur. on where you're from. Yeah. <laughs> so they'll say, oh, I'm going to talk to all my friends and family, and I'm going to raise all this capital. I'm just going to buy all this real estate. Raising capital takes a certain personality and a certain uh, toughness, uh, communication uh -huh. skills, right? And so if you can't raise capital, you're probably not going to make it in that business. You know what takes no personality trading trading yeah. yeah in fact no personality is probably an asset if you're born yeah. without a personality yeah. the very the very very best traders i have met why do you think mitt romney did so well i know right <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, well he, he's multi-talented right. he can yeah. do the he can do the negotiation oh, acquisition geez. i can talk gut about, that company that's not a problem talk about um, a guy that went from politics <laughs> that like like it was funny i don't want to digress but I'm, Too late. My dad, like, you know, I'm a nutty libertarian, so I vote for people no one's ever heard of, and I know they're not going to win. And yeah. The libertarians are all nutty, too, anyway. Yeah. You, you know, you got far left, you got far right, and I don't know where the, the, the libertarians, they're like far backward in yeah. a different plane. They're nutty, right? Isolationist. They do not so, play well with others. Yeah, exactly. They so do I'm, like their guns. <laughs> That's it, dude. That's the only reason I'm there. You know, yeah. I'm not. I'm not like you know who's like McMack if he went down to 
Belize and killed somebody. Yeah. Great. That's their Canada. They, they got set them up, man. I'm telling you, they set them up. But the other, but the other guys are catching up. I mean, let's, you know, let's not consider libertarians as McAfee because yeah, they're not going to. He's, he's kind of. What's funny is, is if now to run in politics, if you're not indicted, you have no credentials, man. Yeah. Someone's got, if you're not impeached or indicted, you, know, you have no credentials. That's right. But anyway, now what we're talking about. I don't know. Uh, you got to be crazy. 80 years old to be a candidate yeah, yeah. for president, too, now. So, I mean. <laughs> Don't meet the age requirement. So anyway, we were, we were talking about uh, Romney. So my dad is like, he was a massive Romney. You know, oh, he saved the Olympics. I'm like, Dad, he's not going to win. And I go, Bron Barack Obama's going to destroy this guy. He says, No, man, he's business and he's smart. And I'm like, So I go, so I, I take my dad to a football game, and we go to watch the Utes play Michigan in the big house. Oh the yeah, road, right? I remember that. So we go, and we get in the bus to go get our rental car, right? And it's at night, and Obama is giving the DNC speech, you know, and everyone's going. And this dude driving the bus is talking to us. He's got it blaring in the bus. He goes, this is the most exciting moment in the history of, you know, whatever, yeah. and boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and my dad is just like, what? And I looked over to my dad. I say, Mitt Romney will never make anyone cry in his speech, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, know? I mean, I, I might cry just out of boredom. Yeah, exactly. But... <laughs> oh, please let me out of here, right? But the point is, is you got to find your personality. I think you play to that. Yeah. And that doesn't mean there's a personal development because I was a sales guy that decided to become an investor because I wanted to be an investor. I had to engage in a lot of personal development in terms of discipline and consistency. Those were my biggest weaknesses. When I would first learn something, I said, oh, here's a cool trick. I didn't know the education continuum. Yeah. So as soon as I become aware, I thought I was proficient. And I had I put on some nice expensive seminars for myself. Oh, I did. Where that I was too. the only guy attending. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. where I learned from the school of hard knocks and the school of colors are black and blue. So when you decide whether you're gonna invest or whether you're gonna trade, I think temperament is is your first start. Yeah. Yeah. And and, you know, and it can be both as well. But when we talk about temperament, you know, the important thing about trading like when you think about the emotions and thinking about being non-emotional, it's very much like poker in that way in that you have to basically say, okay, I was ahead, but now I'm behind. I've got to be willing to cut this. You can't sit there and scream at the computer and say, well, they got it wrong. It'll come back. You know, you can't be emotional that way. It has to be very systematic. It has to be statistical. It has to be just analytical that way it's where analytical you, it's unemotional. And it's detached. Just, yeah. And that's not how people are wired. Exactly. And so, you know, and exactly. so for me, you know, I was a sales guy. I just happened to be selling trading software. And I had some experience because I got involved in the dot com era and I managed to lose money in a market that was going straight up. There you go. And that's because I, I had a lot of enthusiasm, but not a lot of education. Yeah. And so I'm selling this really cool software that had every every indicator, Technical every amount, tool. Yeah. I mean, it was great stuff. I mean, shout out to the guys Metastock. at Metastock. Yeah, great stuff. Yeah, Metastock. Um, you know, and, and I uh, had a tragic experience. I had this one single trade that made more than my commission check for the month. And then it's over. And I was hooked. That's yeah. it. Done. And um, it took me years to reverse engineer getting back to being detached and systematic about it because – you are, it's, it's really difficult to separate ourselves from that money, the dopamine, the high, the low, yeah. the fear, the panic. I mean, it's, if you don't have a plan and a system, system. I was going to say system, yep. you, otherwise you're not, again, no, the average person is just not wired to be successful and it's not a fault of the person. It's just the input of stimulus and response and the way people react is we're just simply not wired that way naturally, but it is teachable. Yeah. And that's one of the big theses I've learned over the years is that, yes, you can. T it kind of reminds me of that movie Trading Places. Yeah. You know, only the elite among us yeah. can, can do with the things that oh, we yes. do. Yeah. <laughs> nature, people, nature, nature, la, 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 the, la, la. The yeah. people on Wall Street <laughs> yeah, are just smarter mama. than all of them. Now, yeah. I think that's it could be taught, trap. Randolph. Yeah. Whatever. More, I can't remember which one was which, but yeah. uh, Randolph and Mortimer. And they had that $1 bet whether they could teach somebody How to be like that. And turtle it, traders. Turtle traders. Yeah. It's the turtle trading story. Yeah. yeah. Turtle traders. Yep. And so which, shout out which to Which proved, guys. by the way, that it is teachable. Tell us that we're talking about some people. No, no. Tell the story of the turtle traders. Yeah. The turtle traders was kind of the same thing. It was a basically a bet where somebody said, no, I don't remember their well, they names, but they, they said you, what you can do 
cannot be taught. And the guy said, no, I could teach people yeah. how to do what I do. And they did. And they did. They made a bet. They put a, an ad, ad in, in the Wall Street Journal. Th- or somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah. They, they, in they took these traders. They tried to get different backgrounds, not super smart. Like the IQ thing was all over the map. That just basically said, can we teach you how they to do this? They had one requirement. Yeah. No previous experience. experience. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They wanted a blank slate and they just wanted to be able to teach you. And over time, those t- turtle traders, they many became, of them are very, very successful. Yeah. Um, most of them have continued in the markets. And, you know, some of them didn't make it. Like there's a, a certain smaller percentage, but basically it was taught how to do things right, how to mm-hmm. cut losses. And, you know, you have to think about your own personality when you're getting into this. You have to have the system, you have to have the education, but you can kind of figure out where you're at in terms of personality. Like I'll give an example of myself. I've, I drove my same vehicle. I could have afforded another car, but I just drove it for multiple decades. I, you know, you like I, your, you're talking about your yeah, truck. My, oh, yeah. my truck. So you I still have your truck. You know, well, what? Yeah, it so, is the number one selling truck in the Middle East. Well, listen, it is I, an amazing <laughs> truck. I, I drove that truck for 23 years for a re- I just, I, there was no Corey's need, a freaking miser, but that's what I'm oh, saying is it. my personality is one where like my idea of a good time spending money is finding the next stock to buy and that kind of stuff where I just don't care about what I look like or what I'm driving <laughs> or whatever. But, but my personality is such where I have to push myself a little bit because I'm not super aggressive yeah. because I'm, I'm just like, my kids will tell you, I'm not a yeller yeah. or anything like that. I'm just mellow. I'm very much. You're very, so very I, stoic. Yeah. So I sort of have to push myself a little bit to be a little bit more risk taking. I'm, you know, more risk averse. I'm just, Hey, uh, steady as she goes, I'm fine with that. So I kind of have to yeah. push myself a little bit in trading where other people will say, man, I'm, they're gung ho. I mean, Noah's personality is to fly down into trees and stuff. That's yeah. not my personality. So, yeah. so his personality <laughs> is one where he's probably going to have to scale it back. And I did. Say, yeah, absolutely. In fact, yeah. I had to learn the temperament. That's something I've gained with some maturity, like, you know, not yelling and, and, and being calm. It's taken me time to learn and to kind of pull back. But I, I also am kind of the same way. You know, you drove a Tacoma. I drove a Land Cruiser. And I, I mean, I love that thing with, you know, it, it was the ugliest thing on the road. Zero no, 60 eventually. Yeah. <laughs> Second best, best selling truck no. in the Middle East. I but, mean, those but things. How many just, times well, did you have that thing doing 360 no, all the time? Call me. Yeah. <laughs> no one would call me. He's like, I'm on a cell phone on top of mount with a coat hanger. I don't know how long the thing will last, but I need a wheel. And that's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> then, then I lost the signal. Like, I don't know what mountain peak he is. Yeah. I know he's lost a wheel. And the how number we... one lesson I've learned exit strategy yeah <laughs> i, I mean, know how to get into trouble can you get that's why i yeah, married melanie now, melanie i mean he'll blow a belt or something she'll get like some pantyhose out tie it on yeah truck he needed a in. mechanic yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely absolutely so a fixer. when, when yes. a person makes that decision uh, i'll tell you the thing i perked up when i heard you say system because if you lack discipline you know if you if you have a system that helps you detach from your own craziness Say, I'm going to follow some rules. I'm going to follow this system. Trading journals, absolutely critical for the trader. Uh, but learn, but what's interesting is the four pillars apply to both. Like yeah. real estate, the four pillars apply. Uh, business, the four pillars apply. Commodities, four pillars apply. Trading, four pillars apply. A little heavier on the technicals, lighter on the fundamentals. But what I've found is I like to do a little bit of both because you can't <clears throat> invest in an option cannot do it yeah because it's not a long-term play you can't and so here's buffett he uses options all the time he uses them opportunistically and he uses them for cash flow he uses them to get paid to buy railroads and you know soft drink companies and that has been where i've i've landed let's talk about where everyone landed i've landed on i love to own companies i love to just believe in american business let those ups and downs go i i look at I don't get really excited about the next big thing. Uh, I like selling paper clips and, you know, copy machines and, you know, ketchup and paper products and yeah, ketchup. Just, yeah, yeah. I like, I have a, I have, I have international paper. I have some of that. Dow they Chemical sell cardboard and, boxes. Yeah. yeah. Exxon Mobil. Because those are businesses that do services. And I think, you know, no matter what AI happens, you're still going to ship something in a cardboard box. You still want to put yeah. ketchup on your Oscar Mayer hot dog. 
with your Coke. So I like that type of stuff. But what I really like, though, is trading options. You, you own stocks and you trade options. Yeah. And, and the option trading for protection, you know, the option trading mostly, I, I love Theta, maybe Vega once in a while. And then every once in a while, I, I enjoy, like I bought some uh, long-term puts years ago on uh, GameStop before the craziness happened. Yeah. And it was funny because I, I missed Blockbuster Video and I kicked myself for I'm like, Blockbuster Video is going on. They, they're not, Netflix is crushing these guys. They're gonna, yeah. We should have shorted that. So when I saw GameStop, like, that's the same business. They suck. And, you know, people that hang out at Blockbuster are a little weird. People that hang out at GameStop. Sorry, GameStop lover, but you're a little weird. <laughs> GameStop. Downloading stuff. So, so I like to, you know, if you see a short and something's teetering and you're able to short it, I don't mind having a little fun with that. Or even just a like a bear call spread to be bearish. Yeah. That's the thing the investing won't bring you is it's not opportunistic other than you buy when the crash happens, but you can't make money in the actual crash. So let's talk about yeah. where, where have you landed. Talk to everyone about, you know, typically you don't need to be too revealing of, yeah. of your assets, but I know you have a lot of Berkshire. Yeah. Got on the so I, he got on the IPO of Visa. For, yeah. I mean, I... I own a lot of stock. I, I certainly invested in the markets. I'm a long-term believer in the upside of like Buffett, you know, that, that we're going to continue to see growth. We're going to see stock prices go higher. And throughout my life, I look at it as what would have been great advice for me when I was born in the 70s? Well, how about invest in the market? What would have been great advice in the 80s? Invest, invest in the market. the market. How about 90s? How about 2000? So it's always the how same about advice. 1935? Right. And so if it's been the best advice for my entire life, it's probably going to be the best advice for the rest of my life and for my kids. And, and so I'm a long-term believer in that investing. And then I do trading where it's a hybrid, right? You're doing, you're trading options against your investments, either to put on protective positions or to generate income. So we can create those streams of income and it, that style of trading is very hands-off. There's not a lot that you need to do. It's, I sell a covered call, it expires in a month. There's not a lot to do between now and then with that, that trade against my investment. Maybe I need to roll it out, maybe I do something, but I can kind of keep an eye on it and it doesn't take a lot of my time. And then I do some trading. It would be, for me, a smaller amount of my capital, not the majority of my capital. So most of my capital is in investing. I can take a good portion of what I have and trade with it. And I do pretty good on the trading side, but I don't do any day trading. I've landed in the swing and position trading style where I, I just have a much, much better probability of success. I'm able to analyze things pretty well, keep a calm temperament. And frankly, I don't want to be in front of the computer all day long day trading so that's a good that's a good opportunity yeah. for yeah. a commercial i yeah. <laughs> i'm the resident ad adrenaline junkie yeah um, no, I'm, I, gonna, yeah. I'm gonna do a commercial we have a site called yourinvestingclass.com yes so go there well you're yeah, free y-o-u-r you're you are your investing class yeah y-o-u-r you are like your investing class.com and really this is actually a good talk i always forget to do advertisements you know i should have done it at the top of the show but but uh it's a place where people actually find out about what that's like. Where'd you land? Um, well, you know, I kind of had to factor in my personality type. So I'm, I, you know, you do like the, the, those crazy like personality tests, which is kind of mumbo jumbo, but I figured out about myself. I like winning and I like to have fun. Um, and so for me, trading was fun. If I was winning, if I wasn't winning, it was, it was terrible. Yeah. Um, and I like to have fun and trading can be fun, but it's also can be a job. And so where I ended up landing was I, I did, uh, pers I heavily pursued the path of trying to be the guy who could beat the market mm -hmm. and, 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 and get rich, you know, trading. And I figured out day trading was not for me. Um, but where I kind of landed into this, I like swing trading and I like position trading because that gave me a greater chance at success. And then the thing I had to really factor in and deal with was me. I was the biggest uncontrolled yeah. variable yeah. It is in, a, the, in the equation. It is an exercise. Like, what, what, no matter what you choose, let's say you choose real estate, let's say you choose stocks, let's say you choose, you know, whatever it is, business. 
it is absolutely the most amazing exercise in personal development. Now, that's not to yep. say that a job wouldn't be. I mean, I guess you have to learn to deal with a boss and other people. But <clears throat> there's nothing that will, like, draw out your weaknesses, like entrepreneurship, like, uh, you know, stocks and investing, because all those little temperament weaknesses, greed, fear, panic, anger, whatever, yep. they're tested in a way that is not done in a yes. paper trade account. account. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. And, and one plug for the financial markets is certainly the low barriers to entry. Yeah, where real estate, real estate requires more capital. Stocks, I mean, you can get involved. You can open a brokerage account for 500 bucks. Yeah. And you yeah. could start investing in a few shares of this and a few shares of that. It's not a respecter of person. Like, it doesn't know where you come from. You're educate. Everybody has access to that now where maybe they didn't in decades past. Now you can go open an online brokerage account and that's the great equalizer that way. And you look at the percentage of here in the US, which is a very wealthy country, the percentage of people investing in stocks is very low compared to the t total. I think it's around 30%. Tragically of, low. Yeah, I mean yeah. 30%, which is pretty high around the world, but pretty low when you think 70% of people are not invested in the best businesses and, and what are they doing with their capital as an alternative? Such like a great spending it. Yeah, I mean, and you, if you don't own the asset, if you're not a producer, how are you ever gonna get yeah, ahead? John Bogle, I've been reading a lot of the late John Bogle lately. You know, he's such an icon, and, and Buffett and the same thing. It's amazing, the GDP, you know, we're just under 30 trillion. And, and what, what makes me crazy is that people say, well, it's the Wall Street elite, it's the 1%, oh, it's all that, well, my kids, idolize Warren Buffett because they like, no, there's an old dude that lives in Nebraska. They don't see him as Wall Street because he's not. Yeah. And, and my kids say, well, shoot, why wouldn't I want to participate in the profits of McDonald's? Why wouldn't I want to participate in the profits, profits of Disney? You mean why you wouldn't can I want share? to participate? Yeah. They you call it the very word share. share. The very word share is instructive. Yeah. And I have a lot of my friends who are like, I'm a centrist, which it either means I can be friends with both the right and the left or neither. I mean, it's really weird, yeah. right? Yeah. But I have some of my liberal friends, they just go crazy, you know, and, and they'll say, oh, you know, it's rigged. I like, you can buy, I mean, you could have bought Google at $15 like Corey did. You could have bought these things yeah. and, and participate in this massive corporate wealth machine. Yeah. But we, they were never taught, never educated to, to do so. And, and I'll, maybe we'll close with this idea. There's this thing called the cash flow game. Robert and, Ki Robert and Kim Kiyosaki developed it. I think it's the best game for a family to play. We play it as a family. And what you do is you have the, the, the fast track, which is the big money stuff, but you start you know, on the slow track. You start in the rat race, and you're trying to get out of the rat race on the fast track. And what's interesting is, is most guys are going to churn in that game. You'll buy a house that, you know, for you know, small amount, and you have the small deal pile and the big deal pile, you're going to sell your small deals to get the capital to do the big deals. So I think if a person is behind and they're starting out, you can't be willy-nilly and go trade because it does take more knowledge, more discipline, more everything. But trading, I think, is a faster way to make more money quicker, which is why that's, that's the way it's gone. Quant trading, high-frequency yeah. trading – the more buys and sells you get, the faster that builds up. And then you can transition over into a more passive idea, yeah. right? Because some people aren't in a position where they can just do the passive. So yeah. I think, you know, taking a class on technical analysis, you know, the four pillars has a great, our four pillars class has a fantastic foundation of what technicals are. Yeah. And there's so many facets to it. You know, there's important isn't that there's, yeah candles and there's every indicator in the freaking universe to learn well it's a it's a big topic and so you need a good teacher you need a good system and you need to develop the temperament and the ability within yourself to stick with the system and then from there when you actually get into what you're learning you, there's really three things you need to have a successful trading system whether it's a swing trading system or a position trading system you need to have a statistical edge you need to have a money management risk management system yeah. And I mean, that's really the key. And then you need to have your temperament dialed in. The idea yeah. that one size fits all doesn't work with this no. because what people really want is they want Nestle Toll House cookie recipe that they can just follow the recipe. 
Yeah. That that would be fine if the trader and what that what they don't understand is it's it's a function of the investor or the trader, not the investment necessarily. Yeah. And and so you, the, you just say, well, I'll follow this Nestle toll house. Well, if you could do that, great. But that's easier said than done. And Jack Schwager wrote this book called Market Wizards. He just book. I've had him on the podcast yeah. I think once or twice. Yeah. And Jack Schwager, um, he uh, in fact we gotta find what episode that is and put a link to it in the in the in description. The notes, yeah. yeah, but but Jack Schwager, um, you know, he interviewed all these guys who were like ultra successful, and he said every single one of them had a different system. There was yeah. not. Yeah. It isn't like they all found this one system. Mm -mm. But the common thing was is they all had a system, a system. system yeah. that they would I've follow. read all those books, yeah. the New Market Wizards, new market wizards all of them. Market wizards. And they're, they're amazing in that exact point. And no matter what they were trading, like some of them focused on futures, some focused on stocks, some were doing options, whatever it was, they all had that system in place. And they all had a system that cut losses and let winners run, right? They all had a system that was basically risk management is critical in that yeah. when you trade what you can do is limit your risk. Yeah. You know, we talked about this the other day. You can control that. You can. Can, that's what you control. You can't control what the stock does. You cannot force it to go up. You cannot force it to go down. But you can control how much you own and where your exit point is. So you can go in with your eyes wide open that, hey, I only have a hundred bucks at risk. I only have a thousand bucks at risk. I only have ten thousand. Whatever and that is comfortable for you is the key to success because you keep it at a comfort level where exactly. you don't your emotions don't percolate to the top. Um, then it's easy for you to make decisions. Yeah, and it is a decision making process, and it's learning to get good and fast at it. And system, it's just being systematic. And the about it. the beauty is, is that you are trading the lowest amount of capital when you know the least, when you have the yep. least amount of experience. And yep. then as your account grows, your experience has grown right along with it. And when's it most important to be at your game? Well, when you have more capital down the road, mm -hmm. and so. You know, I, I hear a lot of people, well, I don't have money to invest, so I shouldn't get this education. Well, <clears throat> who needs it worse than you? Yeah. You know? <laughs> Look, well, you know, and, it? and for this me, kills me, I kid yeah. you not, guys, at one point in time, I sold my car to get some capital. Steve to, Jobs sold to trade. his to go so I, so I could go trade. Yeah. yeah sold and, his man. and it wasn't even that fancy of a car. It was, it was the third best-selling car in the Middle East. <laughs> 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 another Toyota, <laughs> another Toyota. Yeah. And, you know, oh I, I, I God, scraped true. together just a little bit of scratch and, and I, and I learned how to protect that. And, yeah. and that's the key. You got to learn how to protect that capital and then it can grow. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> you guys, you know, the guy gets out of the hospital, he's a new man. Yeah. I'm telling you, he is a new Listen, man. Listen, if you need to know what the fourth or fifth best selling yeah, in the just Middle East, just I, ask Noah, just ask but Noah. I'll bet it's Toyota. Yeah. It's probably a Toyota. <laughs> Corolla, Camry. Toyota's I don't even know if I can name whatever too they many are. more than but that. But Toyota's yeah. a tough yeah. stock to Isn't trade. Isn't a Lexus just kind of, those... a, kind of a fancy Toyota? Yeah. Is yeah. that all Lexus yeah. is? Yeah. Yeah. It's just a luxury Toyota. That's the 14th I had this buddy of mine. I had this buddy of no. mine. He bought a Lexus. He <laughs> thought he'd arrived. They don't sell a lot No, he was. He goes, you get good at business like me, you can buy a Lexus. I'm like, that's a Toyota, dude. I don't <laughs> want is, a Lexus. Right? It's just a high price. It, it, it yeah. doesn't even run as well as a Toyota, that's, probably. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway. Maybe it does. Hey, uh, uh, check check out uh, yourinvestingclass.com. It's a great place to start. Believe in yourself. Uh, the turtle traders should give people a tremendous amount of hope. And you'll land in the in the right spot if you stick with it. By the way, I think that there's some turtle traders in the Market Wizards books. Yeah, yeah. right, absolutely. So. And the other thing is, when you talk about uh, not having any money, okay, every rags to riches story starts with the rags. Yes, and, right. And most people, like myself, when we got into financial education, we got in it because we didn't, it's like people kill me. It's like, well, I, I'm not going to take piano lessons. Why? Well, I don't play the piano. Well, uh, <laughs> well, no, say that again. No, I really, I'm not going to take piano lessons. Yeah. Well, I don't play the piano. I'm no good at it. Yeah. What? <laughs> so the, 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 the reason maybe that a person, like if a person doesn't have the financial situation that they think they could have had or have the potential to have or wish they had, yeah. the underlying reasoning of that all the time is that you don't know how to invest. Yep. And I always tell people that want to play the I don't have any money card and that kind of whiny card. Well, no, rags to riches. Everyone starts out with nothing. Yeah. You're self-made. Most of the millionaires, 70% of them are self-made. 
Yeah. Yep. Very few oh, of them absolutely. inherit stuff. Seventy percent of them didn't have anything. They had to learn how to do it. Right. Yes. So 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 yeah. The 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 idea that I have to have money to start where you can start. And it's you learning. Don't lack the guys that, resources. Yeah. Yeah. You lack resourcefulness. Thank yeah, you very much. Sure. The, yeah, you kind of got me on a rant. Yeah. You guys hit me. They, hit, they kind of hit this little thing. Just tee it up. Yeah. <laughs> the, the idea that the, the, when they play that card, this is what I always say. I say, you ever seen Back to the Future? Oh, yeah. Okay. And they get the flux capacitor and the door, and they go, and you can go, Biff goes in the future, the villain Biff. And yeah. He, he gets a sports almanac, and now he, ha he can go bet and win. Yeah, that's right. Well, basically, what is the value of knowing the future? If, you, if I gave you a crystal ball and no money, what would you rather have? Would you rather a crystal ball? Or would you rather have you know five thousand dollars? If you had the crystal ball, you'd figure it out, and that's really what fundamental analysis and technical analysis. Is. We don't have a literal crystal ball, but we do have a way to manage risk. We do have a way to measure potential upsides and improve your probability. All that type is, of stuff, which is making a bet that's better than fifty-fifty type exactly. of thing. Yeah. yeah. So that's good stuff. All right. Yeah. Uh, I remembered now to plug our our site. I always just get going and you know i forget but it's your investing class.com cool stuff on there it's free check, check it, it out. out yeah people with no money can do free can't they yeah <laughs> many christmas they can afford it yeah they can afford yeah how can i afford it so that's great stuff um wonderful to thanks for your time guys Glad really fun po podcast yeah, that was a good one i enjoyed the idea of talking about trading if you want to go fast and you need to make up you're probably going to learn to trade more time more discipline well you get what you put into it. Yep. Uh, if you are an investor in a 401k, but you've got a little bit, and you're like, what am I going to do with this now? Well, maybe learn to write a covered call at least. Man. Yeah. Or maybe to learn, learn to do a little bit of everything. I like to trade the options and own the stocks. Yep. Yeah. So kind of where I've ultimately landed is I've had to learn how to become an investor, so I hang out with a great investor. I've had to learn how to be a good risk manager, so I've found, hey, you got a great risk manager. Yeah. And you know, then I've had to learn how to be uh, you know, the best version of myself. You're the so best trade adjuster right So now. I can find the balance that, you know, and that's what it requires. You kind of come around, you find a system, and it is it is the most accessible thing uh, in the world. And there's there's yeah. anybody can do this. What you're, yeah. what you're really good at, Noah, is you start with one trade, and you know how to build that tree of saying well if it does this this is how i react if it does this cool. how i react when you're this. bad at predicting it's like the having future. three you, you, <laughs> you, you predict you're all stupid, three you're you ready gotta be tough well no yeah. you just you, <laughs> and on that note that's a that's a closer right yeah. there you've been listening and watching the cashflow academy podcast i think my guests and dear friends noah davidson Corey halliday uh we'll see you next